Okay, what's going on guys? No guys here. Welcome back to the video. And in today's video, we're gonna go with the 5212, the more attacking variation of the 352. I know you guys love the 352, but the only issue is is that when you have two CDMs, the 5212 has two centimeters, and when the left back and right back go forward, they are completely unmarked. So I always look at my 5212 as my more attacking variation of the 5, uh, 352. I'm gonna go into attacks and structures, but the most important thing I want to say is when these guys go forward. They are completely unmarked. You cannot mark them. And that is why you'll love to use formation. I guarantee you, any player, no matter what, even if you don't cross the ball, I don't cross the ball in, but I still love this formation because when these guys go forward, you always have a person to pass to. Well, let's go straight into tactics. So defensive style. Um, it's important to note when you're attacking with this formation, you only have a back three, just like you do in the 3-5-2. They're basically the same formation, except for you have left backs and right backs instead of left mids and right mids, and you have two centre mids instead of two CDMs. Now, the problem is with this formation, is that when you're attacking, you have a back three. So when you're out of possession or when you're in possession of transition, you don't want to be over pressing. And that's why I'd say you ideally want to go pressure on heavy touch at the most, but balanced. I would say if you're losing, this shouldn't be a formation to be using to be used when you're losing, let's say, 7-0. You need to use constant pressure 4-4-2 for that. It's like if you're one or two nil goals down and you want to break through. I'll guarantee you, you'll break through this formation. That is a nil, guys, guaranteed because you'll always find a player available. I would say balance for most players. If you're on a higher tier elite player, you can consider a um, pressure every touch. Now, width. Now, don't forget, it's a basically a 4-1-2-1-2 in some way without the center mid um, so when you're defending it's quite a narrow formation anyway so what I normally do is I just bring the defensive with 55 um, don't forget when you're defending out of possession you're basically going to have three players at the back because your left back and right back are going to be springing forward you're going to be attacking in that five striker formation almost similar to the 3-5-2 so essentially you can argue when you're out of possession and once, once you get the once I suppose you can say you lose the ball when you go to a defensive phase, these guys come back. It takes some time for them to come back, but when they do, you don't want them to be too wide or too narrow. The 5 2 on 2 is already quite a narrow formation, especially down the central line, and you don't want to be too wide to create these massive gaps in between these areas. Um, for the depth, now you can increase up to whatever you want. I um, mean, you can go all the way from 45, this year the free roam here, 45 to 70. So I want you to go into a game and be like, okay, you know what? Let me try out 45. Is it too defensive? Try 70 and then work your way into the middle. This will depend on your skill level. You'll see a higher tier players that are very aggressive can get away with a higher depth. Whereas, for example, lower tier players who struggle with defending may get around or may get away with 45 or probably even 50, 55 if you're on the lucky end. Um, especially if you have fast players at the back, you can kind of get away with it. I would say, to be honest, I'll be honest, I think 45 is completely fine. Um, don't worry about it. I still use 45, but you can go higher or lower. It doesn't really matter too much. Just how high up the pitch you are when you're out of possession. Now, build up play. This is the most important thing. You need to use fast build up play and forward runs. Now, the, the importance and the imperative aspect of this is when you have the ball, as soon as you win the ball back, these guys are going to fly forward, but they're going to fly forward in their own lane. Okay? That's the most important thing. Then you're going to have these guys completely unmarked. Now, the way the formation kills your opponent is most people have a defensive line like this or like this. If you have a wide, if you're up against a wide defensive line, these guys will separate the left back and right back and you'll create a 2v2 with your strikers with your opponent's center backs. If your opponent is playing a traditional narrow system, when these guys go forward, they will be completely and utterly unmarked. When you use this in the game, you will see what I'm talking about. Although he will be narrow and he will create a numerical advantage against your 3 vs 2 with your cam and your two strikers, your left back and right back, they are going to be completely unmarked. You can essentially switch the ball to them and pass the ball to them and they'll be unmarked every single time, no matter what. Because the game does not have a registrar, or register should I say, uh, for someone in the defense lane. The only way you can defend against it in theory is a 5 vs 5, but you do that, you still get the numerical advantage in the middle. So you can't effectively defend. And don't forget, most people don't even know how to defend this. This is why the 5-2-1-2, 5-3-2 was meta in FIFA 19. Not FIFA 20 when everyone started using it. It was meta FIFA 19 because that's where you can get the ball to them unmarked and then you can abuse the L Tornadoes. And that is why the meta formation was always been there, but it really made sense in FIFA 19 as opposed to FIFA 20 when Dull and Mike then used it, 5-3-2, and everyone, of course, then copied them in straight. Uh, for the width, I'll be honest, 60 is completely fine. We are going to be using Hug the Sidelines. So Hug the Sidelines only affects the left back and right back so as soon as you start the game you want to actually hug the sideline so these players are as wide as possible so your idea is these guys are together 
and you can argue these guys in their separate lanes. They're basically far away and they're going to be the outlet player that you can always pass the ball to. Now, as I mentioned, you do have a cam and you have two strikers, so you are ready for the counter attack, but I'll explain that as well in a second. Um, for players in the box, you can increase this. Um, don't forget, this is a very attacking formation. Um, you could argue the only weakness of this is if you have so many players going forward, it's the counter attack. But I think most people can defend with three at the back, I'll be honest. Um, you do like the two CDMs, whereas the 3-5-2, th as I mentioned, the reason why the 3-5-2 is probably the more stable out of the two, maybe not the most, um, um, maybe not more attacking, but the reason why it's more stable is you have the CDMs and you can put the instruction on cut passing lanes. This detrimentally affects your opponents because it makes them really hard for them to get the ball from their cam or the center mid to the striker. They send a mid position perfectly all the time and CDMs, they naturally stay a bit more back. Whereas in contrast, if you use a 5-2-1-2, you're basically on your own. Um, I'm not going to say you're going to have no one there, but you're going to have them there, but it will depend on your skill level. If you have center mids here and you run forward, you will get killed every single time. But with the 3-5-2, even though you might have a higher skill level, you'll at least be smart enough to understand, okay, someone's running behind my center mid position a bit naturally. So... You have to remember, these guys are not going to be as naturally back as you would like them to be normally. So that's just the one thing, the only weakness with this formation. Um, but I do want to say, of course, before I get into it, this video is sponsored by my FIFA School Series. If you do want to get better at FIFA, you can come join my FIFA School Series. Um, right now, we are making videos on more effects like player lock and um, we have some skill moves tutorials and we have the road to elite division and we have all the other hundreds of tutorials on the channel uh, on my patreon if you don't if you don't get better after one month i'll refund your money that is a nil guys guarantee that is how sure i am this is one of the best services to get better at fifa i'll refund your money i don't think anyone else offers that because i don't think anyone else can offer that but anyway back to the video so instructions stay forward stay central for both the cams um, and strikers simple uh, effective you can put get in behind if you really, really want to, but you don't have to. Um, I find that most of the time you're going to be outside your opponent's box with your left left mid and your right mid, uh, or your left back and my back, should I say, this far wide, and you're generally recycling the ball between your two centre mids. Cam, good at defending, you put him on stay forward if you're good at defending. If you're not good at defending, you put him on stay back while attacking. Either way, you make sure he's got in, get into the box for a cross that when your left back and right back do get the ball they are going to be inside the box or that cam's going to be that late runner because you're going to have a 2v2 up against your two center backs your left back's going to be here your opponent's left back's going to be there your guy's going to be there you're going to have your two strikers here and this cam would be in, th in theory the free runner um so that's important but again if you're good at defending put this on stay forward you can always bring back this guy manually as well don't forget um left center mid and right center mid i put them both on stay back while attacking now you can leave them on balance support. Well, if you leave them on balance support, what happens is the players in the box, it kind of adheres to what this number is on. Um, but let's say your most offensive option. So in this system, I would say, so normally how I would line this up is I'll have a Neymar in striker, take a Tito and Marshall up front. And then what I'll do is you have to relegate someone to the left back and right back role. Now, uh, what I will do normally 99 times is I would say, I put someone like Morales. You ideally want, I'll get onto what kind of players you want here in a second, but something like this. And then I can sub off Manafa for um, a left back or a right back or a winger. Um, anyway, going back into the uh, the system. So, yes, yeah, so one of the most defensive players, you can always put them on, stay on the edge of the box or cross that way. They never go forward. And at least you have one guy outside the box always that you can always recycle the ball to. So, if this guy is going forward, in this case, it should be Diallo, who should be on, stay on the edge of the box. Or you can leave both of them, but at least you can have two players back. So, whenever you don't get a chance going forward or you can't cross the ball in, you can always recycle the ball back to the centre mids. Uh, now, for the left back and right back, the most important thing join the attack conservative and overlap in fact you know what i'm going to do is um by the time you're watching this video um let's say uh, maybe a couple of days after i'm actually going to make a video on my fifa school series on how to actually use the 5212 i'll explain to you the tap pants because i've done this for a video um uh for the so if you're on a fifa school series do, do check out the video on the 4231 i'm going to do a video like this very very similar where i explain um, the attack patterns for the 5212. So I'll do that to make you use this formation, and have you use it to the fullest potential. Um, but what I would say is over here, I would personally, personally put join the attack, conservative and overlap. Now, if you understand how attacking fullbacks work in the game, you'll leave both these guys on stay back while attacking, and then you'll activate attacking fullbacks manually with the D-pad tactics. 
So you have to activate attacking fullbacks manually and hug the sidelines when the game starts. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you don't even know what d pad tactics are, just leave them on during the attack, conservative and overlap. So every single time you get the ball, they will surge forward. Now overlap is important because you want them to be running on the outside. Hug the sidelines makes them run as wide as possible. So when you have possession of the ball, hug the sidelines makes them wide. So when you have a combination of join the attack and overlap, they're going to be in their own lane, completely on the outside, basically touching the touchline. Think about Guardiola's 4-3-3, you know, David Villa and the Pedro, right? This is David Villa, that's your Pedro. I said effectively how this formation is playing when you're attacking. Um, that is the way you want to do it. Do not put a um, step up on this. You will get killed disgustingly. You don't want to be done doing that because you're going to be done. You're going to get countered. Uh, the left center back and the right center back. Um, don't leave any of these on conservative or anything like that. Uh, what you can do is you can put these guys on overlap. What this does is it basically just makes them when you're attacking a bit more wider. So you can always do a one two back from your. So this guy goes forward. You can do a one two back from your right back to your left center to your right center back or your left back to your left center back that's all that means they're not going to be making runs past your left back and right back that's the big biggest misconfusion they are not um but if you're not sure about this you can just leave this on balance stay back while attacking should i say um that is basically that and what i would say is so make sure you put this on overlap and what is uh i don't normally touch the goalkeeper but this might be one of the few formations where i'd say what you can do is leave this on balanced and put sweeper keeper so um, the keeper will come out by himself if there is a good chance of winning the ball. Um, especially if there's a through ball in behind. If you get done by a through ball, at least that guy's going to be there to run in behind. Um, and that is basically effectively it. What you ideally want here is you want ideally a left back and a right back. Ideally someone who's got very, very good stamina or someone that's got very, very good um, sprint speed. Because these guys are going to be running up and down the entire pitch, the entire game. Understand that. It's very important you understand that. But a lot of people always try to think, oh, you know what? Let me play someone who's got low stamina. So let me give an example, okay? So if I go back to my, um, if I go back over here, you can see over here, um, Le Morales, Morales, very, very good card. Um, you can use him because he's perfect because he's four star four stars got 88 stamina and very very good sprint speed i have a catalyst on him you can put 100 and whatever you wanted to put him on he's very very good now you're going to say to me his defensive stat is not good now it doesn't matter if you really want to you can use someone like a tar. let's say you're really worried about that you can always sub on someone like a tar. you can get the informal tar for like 60k now 40k it's an absolute steal so you can always sub someone like that on but ideally you don't need that player because don't forget the you're going to be defending in the back three these are left backs and right backs, but they're more of attackers. It doesn't matter about the defensive stats, they're still going to stay in position. But the ideal thing to have here is someone who's got high, high work rates. High, high work rates. Or someone, oh, sorry, sorry, high work rates, high sprint speed and high stamina. That's the ideal. Um, or you could just sub on a winger here. So let's say if you really don't have a player, you can sub on like a tar. If you really can't afford that, just sub on a winger. So if you're going to use this formation in game, make sure you sub on wingers here. But what I'll do is I'll create an attack patterns video on my FIFA school series where I'll explain this in further. But anyway, guys, that is, of course, the 5212 custom tactics and instructions. I hope you enjoyed this video. As I don't forget, my FIFA school series, patreon.com forward slash nil, guys. Link is down below in the description. Um, what I'll do is. Um, if you are part of that, I'll create a tap pack. So if you're not part of that, what I'll do is I'll maybe on Sunday show you a video on how to use this formation in the attack. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Take ease, of course. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.